looking at 2.1 to start with. Uh, let's look at the titles that uh, you were asked to. Yeah. And let's make sure that you guys know what sort of properties each um, type of bonding has, uh, which will be there. Yeah, that's the setup that I use, but should it be on this window. There you go. Um, all right, so bonding practical results. Let's talk about that. Um, if you remember what they are, if you remember what they are, yeah, all those. Sorry about that. Yes, covalent, ionic, and metallic. They are the ones that um, you would have. Um, so sodium chloride. Actually, let's just talk about um, um, on the next slide. Actually, there you go. So let's look at uh, what sort of atoms are involved here. So can you see that uh, sodium chloride has sodium and chloride? As the name suggests, mm -hmm. what are they? Metallic or non-metallic? Both. Both. Yep. Metallic and non-metallic. Types of bonding should it be? Ionic. Ionic. Sounds good. Structure-wise, what should sodium chloride make? Lattice. Lattice. Yep. Is what you get from um, ionic compounds. Are you all clear about that? Yeah. Next one, magnesium sulfide. Both sounds good. Metal and non-metal type of bonding. Ionic. ionic. And structure is lattice, lattice metallic. Uh, sorry, ionic lattice. So same as sodium chloride. Sugar. Sucrose are you used? Types of atoms involved were. It's C, H, and O only. Therefore, non-metals non only. Are you typing in or writing on your le lecture note there? Or checking your lecture note? Yeah. Types of bonding should be what? Covalent, because it's non-metal only. Structure. Mm, interesting thing here. It's actually molecules. Sugar um, is molecules. It's just that the, um, the molecules pull each other because of yeah, the parts which are fairly um, electronegative and they can pull each other. Yeah. So the sugar is just a bunch of small, small molecules attached to each other. Correct, yeah. It is actually making, uh, yeah, that's right. It's a small molecules, but because the molecules pull each other, I'm now talking about intermolecular force here, between molecules, okay? Um, because they pull each other strongly, that's why you can make a grain of sugar. But it's actually a molecule that you're dealing with. Okay? So it isn't a single structure? It is actually individual single structures. That's correct. What is? Sugar. Sucrose so is actually molecules. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So it's a bit different from, um, uh, I guess, magnesium sulfate or sodium chloride in that sense. So it needs to be actually uh, written as more molecular. Okay? Okay, moving on to vegetable oil, CHO again only, so the atoms involved are non metals only. Types of bonding should be covalent, yeah. So if it's non metals only, covalent, yeah. Structure would be this is also molecular, good. They are pulling each other fairly well, therefore. Um, you'd see it as what state? Liquid. liquid. That's right. Oil it appears as liquid, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's still molecular. <clears throat> Just like water, which is the next one. Yeah. So oil and water, that should be pretty much the same. Right. So no metal only. Covalent bonds between hydrogen and oxygen, and again, small molecular for water. Now, let's talk about zinc first before solder. 
shall we? What do you think of, well, atoms involved in zinc metal? Yeah? Yep, metal only. So metal atoms just line, line up or connect to each other. So metal atoms only, yeah? Types of bonding? Metallic, if it's metal only, that's right. Structure? Yeah, so metallic structure can be large lattice, okay? Never molecule. All right. How about solder? Lead and tin alloy. Atoms involved are? Metals only, yeah? Types of bonding is? Metallic, because metal only, structure was? Lattice, metallic structure, lattice. Oh, sorry, metallic bonds, lattice. Okay, remember that pattern there? How about last one, oxygen? Formula of oxygen gas that we are talking about is? O2, good. And what atoms are involved? Non-metallic, therefore the covalent bond is what you should say as well for bonding, yeah? Non-metals only, covalent. Structure would be? Small molecular, good, good. It's small molecule, molecular structure. Now, um, oxygen appears as what state? Gas, gaseous state. Meaning molecules are far apart from each other. They don't want to be attracted to make liquid or, you know, solid that's where we are with this one let's keep going slide 17 here <clears throat> now we know the types of bonding and structure you just have to copy that from what you had just then now let's talk about just the substances itself let's complete this charge carriers here you might have delocalized electrons you might have cations and anions and also none. Now substance itself before being dissolved, okay? Sodium chloride. Is there any charge carriers? No. no. None of the ions are uh, delocalized. I think they cannot move freely, yeah? So you should say none there. Magnesium sulfate. There's none as well, good. How about in sugar? Is there any charge carrier? Did it show any conductivity when it was solid? No. So try connecting that knowledge with what you saw. So none for sugar. Vegetable oil? Did it conduct electricity? No. So no charge carrier. None. Uh, solder? Yes. It carried electrons. And then you could even see uh, the light turning on, yeah? So what was the charge carrier? For solder. The yes, delocalized electrons, also known as free electrons. Yeah. Zinc should be the same. Zinc has a carrier of uh, char charge carrier of delocalized electrons. Oxygen gas. No. Yep. Yeah, no char charge carriers. Well, that should match up with uh, what you observed, which was the conductivity of the substance. Last column there. So that's the important part. Let's just zoom through this. So next slide. Slide 18. Oop, there you go. <coughs> so types of bonding, structure, same thing. Um, force between particles. Now, what did I mean by that? It really was something about um, strong or weak, okay? Or how strongly um, particles within a substance was bonded. Or how easy it was to separate molecules if you were dealing with molecules, okay? Melting point. Let's actually look at the melting point to start with. <clears throat> we had gas, yeah? 
oxygen at the bottom. And what we said even before the crack was oxygen's melting point was very low. That's that's the relative that's where we are setting as the lowest among these chemicals, yeah? <clears throat> so oxygen very low. Which one did you observe as the highest melting point? Or which one was the one that you could classify as very high? Um, magnesium sulfate. Yeah, that's one of them. What was the other one that didn't melt at all? My, my zinc uh, melted after like a minute or so. Hmm. Um, should have been sodium chloride. It might have changed color because it got burnt a bit. Sodium chloride and magnesium sulfate. You can put them as very high. Now you may have actually um, observed some bubbles coming out from magnesium sulfate when you try melting it. Uh, that's part of, I think, um, oxygen from sulfate ion popping out, but it didn't melt, I don't think. <clears throat> it didn't become liquid, for sure. So now we have very high and a very low here. Let's classify the others in between. What do you think was the next, um, next one? Uh, from the top. So sodium chloride very high, magnesium sulfate very high. What could be considered as high melting point compared to them? Yeah, which one was easier though? It's melting soda and zinc. Soda was very very low. Soda was much faster. My zinc, zinc uh, little piece um, did melt but took much longer. So I would say Zinc was the next highest. So let's put zinc as high melting point, not very high. High. And then let's put soda, which is solid, but easy enough to melt. So let's say soda was a medium <coughs> melting point. <clears throat> So we've got sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate as the highest, zinc next, soda next. Which one would you put next? Which one has which one of the rest has still a solid state? Sugar. Sounds good. So sugar would be I don't know, low, mid, mid, low. <laughs> if soda was medium, well, sugar has to be a bit lower. That's right, easy enough to melt about buns and burner, but still would be solid otherwise at the room temperature, yeah? So you can melt. So let's call, yeah, sugar as. Yeah, mid, medium to low. It's almost the same as soda, I guess. And then I guess it's almost the same for vegetable oil and water. Yeah, it's already melted. So you didn't have to test for melting point. <laughs> Besides, you know that vegetable oil catch fire. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we know the ranking in terms of melting point here. What do you think of forces between particles now? What can you say about sodium chloride or magnesium sulfate? If it doesn't melt easily, if its melting point is very high, what can you say? Strong, strong good. Not molecular though. Strong, yeah, strong um, interaction between the, uh, sorry, attraction between ions. Remember, ionic compounds cannot be molecular. It forms large structure. Yeah, So it cannot be mo uh, strong molecular force. 
you can say intramolecular, strong intramolecular force between sodium and chloride ions. How about magnesium sulfate? If sodium chloride's um, force between particles were strong, then? Yeah, yeah. Because it had high melting point, you can say that, again, magnesium sulfate had strong intramolecular force. Good. What was the next one down? Zinc? What do you think? Force between particles were? Yeah, we managed to melt it, that's right. You alright? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a tissue field. Um, yes, zinc, um, fairly strong. Um, a bit weaker, I guess, um, compared to sodium chloride or magnesium sulfate, but fairly strong. Again, intramolecular force here. Solder would be the same, but even, uh, even a bit weaker. All right, what was next down? So zinc, solda, a bit weaker, but still fairly strong, intramolecular forces. Which one was next? Uh, vegetable oil and water were about the same. What do you think was the forces between particles? What was the particle in those anyway, in those substances? Is that lattice or uh, molecular? Molecular, yep. Water and sugar, both were molecular. Oil as well. Oh, I forgot to talk about sugar. They were molecular ones one day, yeah? Sugar, what can you, what can you tell about the uh, forces between sugar molecules? Mm -hmm. Compared to water and oil though, um, they were pulling each other fairly well, yeah? Yeah, so stronger, I suppose, stronger intermolecular, intermolecular forces for sugar. Then what about water and vegetable oil? Yeah, you can say weaker intermolecular forces. For both vegetable oil and water, weaker intermolecular forces sounds good. How about oxygen? <laughs> well, if the water and vegetable still had a bit of interaction, and we call that as weaker, oxygen molecules are far apart because forces were yeah much weaker yeah much weaker Let, let's just say very weak intermolecular force very weak the box seems small there for oxygen but very weak IMF very weak intermolecular force how's that making sense now the thing that you want to think about here is whether, uh, I, what I want you to do is to make sure you know the properties of each type of bonds, each type of substance with different types of bonds, both primary and secondary bonds, okay? So what's the um, property of typical ionic bonds, uh, ionically bonded um, compounds? Yeah, so that's the summary that we can get from this table. That's good. So high, high boiling, boiling point means a strong intramolecular force. Yeah. So intra, sorry, intra, uh, intra molecular, yeah, molecular force, that's right. 
Um, for covalent ones, it really depends on how strongly they are, the molecules are attracting each other. But then we, we'll talk about that when we look at the shapes of them. Okay. All right, moving on to the next slide. Let's keep going because we've got two more slides only. So that's the summary table here. What did you learn? If it's a metallic, it will be continuous. Metallics are, metallic ones are always continuous. Forces between particles are? Yeah, strong intra. So the melting point would appear as high. Good. Ionic one? Continuous or molecular? Yeah, ionic ones can make continuous structure. Lattice, ionic lattice. Forces between particles would be? Let's drill it in. Yeah, it's strong intra again. Okay? Melting points would be? Hi. Correct, Be uh, not ionic at all. Sugar is not ionic. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's all good. Covalent. Now, if you had a hand on something that's continuous structure, like carbon that makes you know, charcoal, or uh, silicon that makes quartz, yeah, it's only non non uh, non metals, all right? So they, they are considered as covalent continuous structure. Okay? Covalent continuous structure. How, what do you think of the forces between particles, between, say, carbon and carbon, if you're talking about diamond? Would that be strong intramolecular or weak intermolecular? Strong. strong, yeah. Generally speaking, continuous co covalent, they, they have strong intramolecular. Therefore, melting point is also high. Okay? But if you had molecules, relatively speaking to continuous ones, right? Covalent molecular. So structure would be molecular, yeah? What sort of forces would be present between molecules? That would be intermolecular, good. If the structures are molecular, you can have intermolecular forces. And a melting point would be? Hang on, melting point. Low, much lower compared to covalent continuous ones. So sugar is molecular. Molecular, sugar is molecular, yeah. Strong Yep. So that's right, that's right. So sugar, for example, has got uh, parts that, tank, that can attract each other, the side which can attract each other. Therefore, it looks like continuous structure, but it's not. It's actually mole separate molecules attracting each other. Oh, so continuous like diamonds. Correct. So covalent continuous ones are like diamonds and the silicon. Okay. Yeah, they can make continuous covalent structure. Covalent molecular structure would be Something like sugar is molecular still, okay? It just a, it has a bit stronger intermolecular forces. Therefore, you would see it as solid. Water, they're playing each water molecules are playing each other and attracting each other with intermolecular force enough to appear as liquid. Yeah. That's one summary table that you, I wanted you to con call there. Uh, Mike. And finally, summary table two. So this one is about um, bonding and also conductivity. Yeah. So let's talk about metallic one. It's a fairly obvious one. Structure is, again, is that continuous, molecular, continuous. continuous. Yeah, that's what metals. Charge carrier is in metallic bonds. Free electrons or, or delocalized electrons, they are the same thing, yeah? Conductivity is? High. Highly conductive for metals, good. How about ionic, so when it's solid? Structure is? Like sodium chloride, ionic solid, yeah? What did you see? Structure is 
continuous is good. Charge carriers are. Was there any? No, because conductivity. Well, you didn't see that solid sodium chloride conducts electrons. Yeah, or electricity. Yeah. So you can say very low for ionic solid. Now let's picture if you could have say 1400 degrees in this room and could melt salt, table salt, sodium chloride. Okay. What do you, what do you think you would see? You've got okay, liquid salt here, which is possible. Okay. What do you think is happening at the molecular, molecular size? Mm, bonds are being broken. Good. So, sodium, uh, sodium ion, Na plus, and Cl minus, chloride ion, they'll be free to move, wouldn't they? Yeah? So, is there any charge carrier if it was a liquid? Yes. Yes, it's and good. Ions That's right. Cations and anions are able to carry charges. Mm -hmm. Structure there, if it's liquid, you would call it as free ions. Does that make sense? Ionic, liquid, structure would be free ions because they're you know, all able to move, move around. Charge carriers are cations and anions. So what do you think of conductivity if you had liquid salt? Highly conductive it is. Yeah, question? Mm. Mm. The thing is, when it's already ionized, like sodium is already in the sodium ion state, sodium plus, right? Chlorine is also, it's not just chlorine atom, chlorine with one more electron, right? They're already in a reacted state. So you're just talking about sodium and chloride separating, and they can freely move around because they've got that enough energy from heat, okay? But if you cool it down, they will just attach to each other again. Now, let's clarify something here. You said water there. Yeah. If there was a water, you're talking about aqueous, something dissolved in water, right? But I'm talking about just melting the substance. Okay? So do you see the difference here? So solid object can be melted, just like, say, soda melting and you could see, you know, bowl shape happening. Zinc was the same to me. It melted and it just became a big splat. <laughs> which I can just move about still as well. That's liquid version of metal, yeah? Um, so make the, uh, the distinction between aqueous solution of something and molten liquid separate thing, okay? Molten liquid, red hot thing, like lava, okay? That's what you would see if you could melt salt as well, okay? So there's no water in liquid. Uh, liquid version of, um, say, sodium chloride. Okay. So only ions, no water. And that leads to the next one, which is ionic um, aqueous. So now we are talking about solution. So say sodium chloride being in water, right? But potassium nitrate. Yeah, you can have potassium nitrate, and you make that a solution. What's the structure? in the solution. What's the structure? It's not molecular. You are not talking about molecules. Is it continuous? No, because you don't see sol solid free anymore. Ions. It should be free ions. Yeah? Sodium and chloride, they are attracted to each other in solid, but as soon as you put them in water, each atom can split because water molecules can pull them up, up, apart. Yeah? So you can make solution, you know? no solid can be left. You can separate them into free ions. Okay? What would you expect um, to be <laughs> as a charge carriers there? Aqueous solution? Which one would, would be the charge carriers?
No, water itself cannot. Ionic aqueous solution. What's the charge carrier in it? That's better. Cations and anions are the charge carriers in solution. Okay? You would only see just bubbles coming out from electrodes when you tested it. But it is considered as conductive, all right? Cations and anions in there. I guess compared to um, ionic liquid or metallic um, objects, conductivity would be a bit lower than that. You can maybe say medium for ionic aqueous, but it also depends on the concentration of ions present. If you could make it very concentrated sodium chloride solution, you'd have um, increased the conductivity more as well. Okay with that? Okay with the difference between ionic solid, ionic liquid, and ionic aqueous? Yeah, nah. When it's together, no charge. Well, oh, no ions really can move. Yeah. That's right. So in liquid, ions are moving around within itself as a liquid. Okay. And in water, so in aqueous solution, ions are moving about in water. Okay. All right. Last two covalent um, continuous one. So think about carbon big structures or silicon quartz sort of structure. So, is is. yeah, continuous structure for sure. Is there any charge carriers? No, no, it's good. So none. Um, some some form of carbon, like graphene, like sheet of carbon, mm -hmm. can conduct electricity. If you could make carbon nanotube, same thing. They can conduct electricity. But apart from that, normal say charcoal, okay. It's not very good. It can still conduct electricity, but not very good. Is it poor conductor? Sorry? Poor um, I wouldn't say it's poor as well, because it's used in uh, metal refinement um, quite a lot. So charcoal itself can conduct electricity, not as well as metals, though. So it's low conductivity? No, no let's, say, not, let's say mid, medium for carbon itself. But if it's silicon, Low, it's a semiconductor. If it's carbon, you can say medium, almost a like medium to high. It can conduct fairly well, Con compared to compared to um, other continuous covalent materials like silicon. Okay, let's go with that. Covalent continuous. If it's carbon, mid to high, a bit less than metal. Yeah. <clears throat> but if it's silicon, no. Well, not, so I shouldn't say no. Low conductivity. But it's semiconductive. <clears throat> Do you know what you can make with silicon? At, um, at the city called Silicon Valley. Do you know what they do? So they grow silicons <clears throat> underground in their factory with high pressure, high oh. heat. They grow crystals. I thought you were talking about Silicon Valley in America. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they grow crystals artificially. They slice it, it and then make chips. And then they put that into computer CPU type of thing. So your phones, your laptops, any electronic device which has CPU, um, it's got silicon chips in it. They're good because depending on what electricity current you put through, they spit out different uh, frequency back at you. And that's good for computers and stuff. Um, you can get you know, a constant signal out of silicon if you had it. So it's a semiconductor, okay? <clears throat> Last one, covalent molecule. Well, it's already saying that uh, uh, it's a molecular structure. Whether the distance is close or not, it's all molecular. It's got small distinctive um, terminating, you know, shape. <clears throat> Charge carriers, is there any? None, yeah, none is good. Conductivity of molecules, 
Did you see any conductivity from sugar itself, water molecule itself, oxygen gas? No. So conductivity, uh, very, very low. Yeah. Silicon would be a bit higher, carbon even more, metals more. Okay. So that's the end of the slide, 2.1. All right, so after yeah, filling up all that, well, let's move on to questions of 2.2, uh, 2.1. Um, I don't think there are many questions in textbook for this part, but that's what you have to know. Um, and the uh, practical test that you would do for topic two is pretty much based on these tables here, okay? So if you, when you are given three, um, three unknown, uh, chemicals which I might just record what sort of property they have and you also get the list of the chemicals that uh, you know those unknown chemicals maybe and you classify against um, what sort of technique you used okay that's going to be something that it's going to be very interesting to test because you can't, you might not be able to be here to do the testing on your own. So what I'm thinking is when you do that test, which is the beginning of term two, um, you will give me your own method. I mark as it is, but I will just do my own method of testing those unknown chemicals. I'll just record the results for you guys. And you discuss and decide which chemical was which um, against the list of potential chemicals that you might have. Okay? Uh, that's probably what will happen, all right? I'll record the results and you just discuss on the results that you get. Okay? So that's the practical test, which you don't know the pra practical for. All right, let's do some questions on 2.1 and then second half, well, after 10 minutes or so, um, let's have 15 minutes of um, question time and after that we'll spend time on she task, right?